I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Welcome to another installment of the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. Tonight, I'm happy to welcome Lynn with us, and appreciate you coming and sharing your story. Glad to be here. So, as we usually do, let's hear a little bit about your background. You've been a multi-generational Mormon, right? Uh, yeah, ever since um, Brigham Young. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. Come from the line of Charles C. Rich. Is that from like Logan? Is that is was yeah, he Rich, a, Rich, Rich County? Rich County yeah, and he all was, that. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. From the first wife, even. <laughs> oh, from the first, <laughs> from the important wife. That's right. <laughs> well, so tell us a little bit about you're active. Your folks active in the yeah, church? Yeah, absolutely. And We're you, completely you, active from birth and yeah. completely believed in it, and you know, just never any question. You were in primary and got baptized yeah. at eight, I guess. And all oh that. yeah, absolutely. And where did you grow up? Um, I grew up in Utah and, and in, uh, I mean, in California. Here. Okay. And mostly in California. Oh, okay. And went back and forth and yeah. yeah. And f again, family very active. You're active, young women's, I guess. And yeah, I was young women's president right before I moved out back out to Utah from California, yeah. raising a family and. Oh. Did you take seminary and? Yeah, I took seminary. I went to seminary, and my yeah. dad was actually over the seminary pro program in California. Oh, and was he? He'd wake us up every morning to read the Book of Mormon. Oh, oh boy! And <laughs> and it was get I your mean, day started right. Yeah, got our <laughs> day started right. We had family home evening on Mondays, yeah. and we just did everything we were supposed to do. You know, as a family. Isn't it? I mean, it's, it it seems idyllic, doesn't it? I mean, it just seems right and just seems normal. Yeah. Yeah. You never had any questions about the church. There was never any controversy, probably, or was there? And no, I had like all these little questions that would come up in my mind, Did and I just go to my dad and say, "Hey, Dad, I don't get this." Anything and, specific that you uh, um, Like if I ever read, like sometimes I would read in the Bible something that contradicted something. Yeah, and I would go to my oh, dad from the and Book of Mormon. Yeah, or and my. I'd ask my dad questions. Answer. Yeah, he'd yeah. try and answer, and sometimes he'd say, "Well, in the hereafter, you'll know the answers." That's kind of a classic answer, isn't yeah. it? It'll all get worked out in the end, or yeah. in the hereafter, we'll find out about it. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of a normal family life. Yeah. Well, in my world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And felt like you had a testimony of the church. I mean, yeah. As a young person, and you just knew it was true, and yeah, and I got married at age eighteen. Mm. And went to the temple. And were they? F was the family happy about that? They were fine with it, yeah. and um, it was return missionary. Okay, and so you were doing the right thing I in was the right, right place. Th yeah, and, and they got married in the temple, and the temple kind of freaked me out the first time I went through. Yeah, I wasn't. They didn't have temple prep classes back then. It was like oh, really? 1983. Yeah, and so they had the whole blood oath <laughs> back then. And it's kind of different, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so I kind of freaked out when I went through, and I kind of freaked out with the whole garment thing, too. About and having to wear I them? I had having or? to wear them, it was kind of yeah. creepy for me. Yeah. And, but then I thought, well, people would say, well, you know, you just aren't spiritual enough. You just need to, you know, get more. Keep going yeah. back and stuff, yeah. Yeah, kind so. of put the burden on you to yeah, like you're just you need to you know read more. You just need to be more, you know go back more often. Yeah, and so 
<laughs> I just listened and tried to, you know, be more active yeah. and go back more often. And then I had children, and yeah. so I had four children and brought them up in the church. And you know, I tried to, you know, I got them in scouts. I got my oldest through Eagle Scout and my wow. two other kids up to life. <laughs> and wow. My boys and yeah. my daughter at Achievement Day and got her Young Women's Medallion. And oh boy. And of course, I, I went through the program with her so I could be the example. <laughs> and so, I mean, just a normal, active, yeah. you know. And again, any questions coming up at all that you... I always have questions the whole time. I went, um, I, um, went through a divorce in mm. 2006. Well, 2004 through 2006 was like this time period. Yeah. And I had lots of questions because I just started diving into the Bible and reading the Book of Mormon, like just to stay strong yeah. and like holding on to something. Did you feel guilty about the, I don't mean to put it quite that way, uh -huh. but did you feel like you had let things, I mean, you've been married in the temple, right? Yeah. And, uh, was there a, a little of guilt associated with that? or? Did no, you? because my you know, ex you know, had done something that was... You don't a, need to go into yeah, details. Yeah, but, but he, yeah. he did something that yeah, uh, would okay. justify a divorce. Okay. And so I I went to my... There were some things that troubled me in the Bible. Like I kept reading... I found anything I could about divorce. Anything I could, I could about marriage in the Bible mm. when I was going through my divorce. So I, would, I went to the state president and I'm like, in Matthew 22 it says, you're not married after this lifetime. Oh yeah, and Jesus says that. Yeah, and I'm like, Jesus says it, and then he's like, I go, and now, and we're taught, you know, we're married after this lifetime, and so like, does, like, is Joseph Smith trumping Jesus? Like, what a thought. Like, that's the thought was going through my mind, and he's Joseph, like, well, after this lifetime, yeah. we'll, you know, you'll, oh, he says something like, Joseph, Joseph had further light and knowledge, and the world wasn't ready for um, the knowledge at that point or something to that effect. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, but it just like, to me, it felt like, you know, so Joseph trumped him. So all this stuff that, for, that Jesus said in the Bible, Joseph Smith came along and changed much yeah. of it. Ch yeah, much of it, and then uh, and trumps him, like mm -hmm. you say. Interesting. But yeah, so reading the... So um, did you just kind of accept that answer? No, it just was <laughs> always like... I was always chewing on it. Yeah. It was always in the back of my mind. Yeah. But I just let go. I just put it on the shelf, like most people do. Yeah. In the church. Okay. So then what happened? You're raising your young family, I guess, with the. Uh, so I'm a single, a single mom. mom. I'm in Utah now. I was in, front, in California raising family. Mm -hmm. And then um, my, my sister in law talks me into going online to go date. Oh. <laughs> so I go on to ldsmingle.com because, you know, gotta be a Mormon guy. Gotta get, you know, the priesthood. Right. Right. <laughs> so, so I go online and I meet this guy. And I, I usually would just like dine and dash, you know, 15 minutes, that's what they get. Well, dine and dash, <laughs> yeah. is that a, a current term, huh? <laughs> So I, I met this guy and um, we, we had dinner and it was going okay and then we had we had a movie after that, and then, anyway, I ended up, we ended up really liking each other yeah. and ended up getting married. Wow. <laughs> and he was a good LDS guy, and yeah. we'll probably get to meet him next week, I guess, but... Uh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and, and you are happy, and again, he's active, and you're active as a family. Yeah, and, I want a good, strong priesthood yeah. mem guy to be an example for my children and all that good stuff, you yeah. know, that's what, you yeah. know, strong <laughs> LDS women want. Sure, sure. <laughs> so then what happens? So then about a year into our marriage, um, my dad gets leukemia mm. and um, we get civil married. And we're civil married. And oh, then for the first, yeah. Yeah, because okay. uh, I have to get a temple cancellation because I'm married to, the first, to my yeah. first marriage, my fr first husband. So I write a letter to the, f the first presidency to ask for a temple cancellation, and about a month later I get a temple cancellation. Oh, okay. okay. So my parents live in San Diego, and my 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 husband says, well, let's get married out there because your dad's kind of weak. Oh, yeah. And I was kind of like, well, 
my current husband, I don't know if he really believes in the LDS thing. I don't know why he's really pushing this temple marriage. Mm. I knew he was he was active, mm -hmm. probably like for my benefit, but I always thought in the back of my head, I said to my dad, I don't know if he really believes like really? in Mormonism. Yeah. But I think he's just going Maybe through the motions. For, yeah. <laughs> There's probably people that do that, so yeah. But hey, he's so. he's good to me. He's a good guy. I love yeah. him. Yeah. And so we go to San Diego, we go get sealed. We're in the sealing room and the temple president's sealing us because my dad's like a temple worker and... Oh, your dad's a oh, okay. Yeah, and so you know, one of his good friends is the yeah. temple president. So the temple president says to my husband, he says, so do you have any questions for me? <laughs> and my husband's like, well, yeah, I do. He goes, I'm sealed to my late wife so does this make me a polygamist oh. if I'm sealed to her? Because he didn't need to get a cancellation, right? Yeah. You did, but he didn't. Yeah, he can have more than one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he said, well, just look at it this way. You know, you get two in the year hereafter. You know, That's like, the temple president. Yeah, <laughs> like, like it was like brushed off, no big deal. But my husband's like chewing on this. It's really bugging him. Plus, I don't believe in polygamy. I uh, yeah. that didn't settle with me in the first place. Yeah. And so I it's think just there's a lot of people that have problems with polygamy. Yeah, I'm not that gonna, whole concept. Yeah, the whole sharing, sharing your, thing. Yeah. yeah just, and then there's whole the whole Matthew 22 thing. Yeah, whether, whether there's even marriage at all. Yeah, yeah, like that's in the back of my mind. So like, so we go through this. We go through the temple ceiling, and then that happened right before. But it was just like this awkwardness, like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we're getting sealed and my husband just had to ask this question and it wasn't this like big wives. spiritual experience it was more like okay check this off our <laughs> list we have all these people here uh, <laughs> but that bothered your husband so yeah so the rest of the year just kind of was like this big flash because my dad ends, ends up passing mm -hmm. and my sister-in-law ends up with leukemia herself a month after that and mm -hmm. then my mom we end up moving my mom out to utah to mm -hmm. take care of her and it's just like the whole year is awful so mm -hmm. meanwhile my husband has this little craw like he's like i'm gonna figure this thing out like this isn't making sense to yeah, me. Yeah, like, like God was just like nudging my husband, like yeah. something's wrong with this play, this thing. So. And it was interesting, <laughs> you were telling me earlier though that you were always questioning. Yeah. And you were asking questions and you'd even go to your dad and he eventually gave you some of these books of his, right? Because you were yeah. always the one. So, so right before he passed, he, his, he was, I spent like a whole month with him and he had gone through all his books he had all these books from like a hundred year old books like wow. and he like they have like a second edition book of mormon and they have mm -hmm. like all these old books so he has this history of the church seven volume set plus this other volume set i can't remember the name of it he's like here journal of discourses I, or I history of the church or something, something like that yeah. yeah he's just like he says okay. here you need to take all these because you're the one that has all the questions in the family <laughs> and you just keep asking so here you, go. you need here to take the these <laughs> so i'm like oh i go thanks okay. you know? yeah. so i took those so when my husband starts asking all these questions you throw him the books oh, huh? yeah <laughs> so, or he has access to all that stuff. So he starts looking and or starts kind of thinking differently, maybe. Yeah, um, but he's not saying anything to me. He's just doing this, uh, you know, yeah. quietly, because he knows I'm like all in all this pain, like because yeah. my the loss and yeah. all these things happening around me. Yeah. So, so and the sister with leukemia, she's is she a member too? Yeah, or yeah, my whole all, all my family. family's active. Yeah, okay. my children, my son's executive secretary in the bishopric. He's got three kids. I mean, you got one on a mission. And I have one on a mission right now. Yeah. Oh my so, goodness. Yeah. Well, so what's what kind of happens? So, about a year after my dad passes, my husband comes to me, and he says. I don't believe in the church anymore. Now this is about what four years ago or so. Yeah, yeah. yeah he just he kind of just kind of throws it out there, and he's like, I just don't want this to ruin our relationship. Or he was like, because I love you, but 
What did you think? I just like go, well, I'm from California. Like, a church isn't for everybody. <laughs> Oh, really? Like, you kind of lay back on the yeah, whole thing? <laughs> yeah, like... That's a good I, attitude. Well, I that was just like... But in the back of my mind, I'm going, oh, I'm still going to prove him wrong. <laughs> well, did you really? I, I was thinking that, but I was, act, I was playing like all... You know, like, like I call it Mormon nice. You know, like... <laughs> You so know? you were letting him <laughs> off the hook and you're saying, oh, that's okay, but you were thinking I've got to show him. Oh, like, yeah, I was going to plot, you know, like, <laughs> I'm going to so pro prove him wrong. So I was going to quietly go, you know, do all this other research to counter what he's, sh you know, saying was yeah. wrong. But I was going to go, you know, be the nice little wife and go yeah. along with it and just, you know, <laughs> be, you know. Yeah. Do that. <laughs> Did he share any of this with the kids? It sounds like they're a little older at this point, so um, were they? He shared that with his daughter that mm -hmm. we have sure. in the house. Um, I think we went slow on that for a little while. So sharing it with yeah, the family. Yeah, yeah, because I wasn't ready for all no, this at that no, time. Yeah. So it was. So what did you do? To find out in your studies, or well, what happened to well, you? Well, what happened to him? me? God just took me on this journey. He, so I kind of helped my mom out because you know we moved her out here. So I went yeah. to her house a few days after that, and I was just kind of poking around her bookshelf because I thought my marriage was having a little going to hit some rocky ground. Oh sure. And I found this little pamphlet, it's called uh, Marriage and Family Relations, oh, that the church I, produces. I think I've taught that class a few oh, times. Oh, okay. So I'm like, okay, well that's cool, because then... This will help your marriage? Yeah, yeah, like, I'll find out, like, some tips on how to keep my marriage out, out from rocky ground. Yeah. So I picked up a pamphlet, and in there was the section on anger, and it has nothing to do with my current husband, it has to do more with my late, my yeah. prior yeah. marriage. Yeah. And there was a scripture in there, and it was Matthew, um, like, I brought it with me because um, Matthew 5, verse 22, and 3 Nephi 12, 22. And it was, it's actually a Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. And it's actually Jesus speaking, and it's the same exact scripture. Except in the JST, like, things have been changed from like with a cause to without a cause. From the Joseph Smith translation? Yeah, oh. yeah, and it brings out the fact that... So that, that seems strange, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> and it brings out the fact that um, it just started saying things about how we need to... Um, <laughs> that, the, that that's the more... we need to follow the JST in here. And it just occurred to me that God doesn't change like the, just like this powerful feeling came over me like god doesn't change he's the same today yesterday and, and tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah. and and then i just like it occurred to me what if i'm wrong like what if i have been wrong what if i was like brought up in the wrong everything like everything was a lie and I just fell to my knees and I just started crying to God like God if I haven't been following you and I haven't been following the right Jesus yeah. like just give me your truth I don't care what I lose I don't care if I lose my family I don't care if I lose my husband I don't care what I lose God you just want the I truth. just want you God because in the, when all this is done like when I die yeah, just, I don't get it's just, you I don't, it's just me and God like Hello. <laughs> so I just was crying to God, like, please, God, just tell me truth. Isn't that what we, we just want the truth? What, yeah. what is the truth? Yeah. The facts, yeah. And after that, I just, God put on my heart to read the New Testament. Oh, really? And it was so strong. And I just started reading the New Testament and started in Matthew. And the Jesus of the Bible was polar opposite of the Jesus I knew in Mormonism. Just. A complete different Jesus, and like you know, new glasses were in my eyes. Yeah, uh, just your eyes are open and seeing things that you'd never seen before. Yeah. How do you explain that to a Mormon person who hasn't had that happen to them? You, you, well, it's like this, and this, like fire within, like, like the Holy Spirit just like is in you and like I could not put the Bible down I'm not kidding you <laughs> and that ha that wasn't true before right <laughs> no it was just like it was like I was so thirsty I couldn't get enough I was yeah. just like it was I guess it was like I was I mean it was amazing 
And the more I was reading, the more I was just crying and I would just pray to God like, oh my gosh, you know, and it was just the most overwhelming, wow. amazing thing that ever happened to me. Wow. And I was just so grateful to him. Like, Amen. you chose me. Like, me. Thank you so much. You know, it was amazing. What did your husband think of this? I guess you shared this with well, him. Oh, yeah. How could I deny it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, of course, I'm going to be and trying he's to looking, And he's studying anyway, yeah. wondering. Yeah. So I just went to him and I'm like, I just can't believe it. Well, this had been answer, an answer to your prayers then, well, hadn't you been? I mean... <laughs> well, and to his, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. At this point, he's probably going, thank you, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for, like, you know, giving her truth so quickly. And, you know, it was, but it became a really amazing journey for both of us. It just yeah. really, like, made us really bond together as a couple and just... You know, made us so thirsty for the word, and it was just so fun. Have you ever just sat back and kind of looked at each other and think, "Can you believe this has happened?" <laughs> yeah, because I mean, well, yeah. you would have a few years ago. You would have never thought that you would have had any doubt like this of the Mormon oh, Church. Oh yeah, right? I would have said no doubt. I was the one that got up on fasting testimony meeting and, and just up oh, completely. Yeah. Yeah. So it it was just it's completely changed my life and following Praise the words God. of the Bible, just like discipling others and yeah. just everything that Jesus taught is just, you know, so it just brings, you know, light <laughs> into your life. It's been an amazing journey. Have you learned more about Mormonism too in this process? Um, yeah, I've Things learned that I mean, you know more about Mormonism <laughs> now than you ever did as a... Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I went through a whole, I'd say a whole year of deprogramming is what I call it. Yeah, just studying and... and yeah, like, what? Figure. where did it begin? How did it get so... Where did, where did, what happened here, you know? Yeah. And how did it become where amazing? it is? Yeah, and I just, I mean, at first I felt, I went through stages of grief. Yeah. Like... You know, how can I believe this, you know, yeah. when what was waiting was me, for me was so easy and so great and so awesome, you know, and, and grace, like this thing called grace. Yeah, did you that ever easy. understand that as a Mormon? What did you think of grace as a Mormon? I I guess I never understood the concept. I never was really taught that concept. Yeah. And they really only scripture we ever use is that you're saved by grace after all you can do yeah that's that, about the only thing i ever remembered about grace yeah it's a free gift well, it doesn't cost anything i know i didn't do that and they're sitting, the, <laughs> sitting in the bible this whole time but we just don't pay any attention to it no no and that's the that's the beauty of it it's like it's like that's why i want to like give things to my mormon friends like here is a gift to you now this is a free gift just like the word grace you is don't free have to pay for this. you don't have to pay for it you don't have to do anything for it yeah. i don't want nothing in return this is a gift just like what christ gave you well, I can tell you have a heart for Mormons, and, and you love this new look of things. How do we get this? I mean, this, that's what this program's about, but how do we get this message out to Mormons to let them in, in on this glorious good well, news? Well, what I feel we should do, yeah. <laughs> the way I reach Mormons is, for instance, like, I'll share with them, like, I went to Bible study. It was so cool. Oh, really? And um, in there, you know when Christ says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why did he say that? Yeah. Well, why he said that is because he's pointing to Psalm 22. If you read Psalm 22, it says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My hands were pierced and my clothes so were cast for lots. He is fulfilling scripture. Right. And like throughout his whole ministry, throughout the whole Bible, he's fulfilling, he's pointing them back to the Old Testament. He's saying, look, look, you know? And back then they memorized scripture, like get them in the Bible, that's all I say. Because <laughs> the Bible is the Word of God, and the Word of God will, like it reaches your heart, it, it yeah. opens your heart, and God changes you. We can't do that. I can't change anyone's no, heart, sense. only God can. The first thing I did was to search out a red letter Bible. Yeah. <laughs> and I started going through the words of Jesus and I just read what he, what was written there, trusting the Bible mm -hmm. as far as it's translated correctly. But I started looking at just those words and I was amazed at what Jesus talked about and more importantly, what he didn't talk about. Yeah. Like you were saying about garments and 
temple and marriage forever and you know all those different things Jesus never talked about any of that stuff yeah I mean and, and then look at you know what did he say about everything from the Ten Commandments yeah did he give all ten or did he give nine <laughs> I mean there's so much you yeah. can learn in just you know his words and what he pointed you to and he pointed you to the words of Isaiah and yeah. you know of course part of the Isaiah is quoted in the Book of Mormon yeah. like 17 chapters worth <laughs> word for word in King but, James yeah English. in King James English <laughs> hey, exactly before, <laughs> I, we're actually running out of time <laughs> okay. again, but I did want you to share a little that story about your son and the pioneer trek oh well, my 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 <laughs> This is my moment in time when I really knew I had Christ in my life is when I went to church for my son was coming, Adam, my son was giving um, his testimony because he went to track, Pioneer, uh, Pioneer Track of his, his um, ancestors. And everyone there was saying, everything I am is because of my ancestors. And I'm like, that, no, everything yeah. you are is because of God. <laughs> and I was just crying because they were so lost. And I was crying, and we were driving up to Park City after this, hit yeah. all their testimonies, and I saw a vision of shackles on my wrists. And the shackles were breaking free, because I'm free in Christ, with this is grace. Mm -hmm. And my son was like, why? He thought I was crying because of his testimony, but I was crying because oh. I'm free in Christ. And it's the, it's God. It's not because of the ancestors no, and the pioneers. No, everything I am is because of God. Wonderful stories, but it and and it's our history. But it's no, it's not what it should be all about, is it? Mm -mm. Well, you've got just a few seconds left. What would you say to your family and friends? That I love them. I just want them to read. You know the God of the Bible. Yeah. The God of the Bible is just. So, in the temple, oh, I'm sorry, go oh, ahead. No. Go ahead. No, no, <laughs> oh, the God of the Bible is, if you read the Bible, you cannot help to know that there's a difference between the Jesus of the Bible versus the Jesus of Mormonism. They're not the same. And it's, and it's a glory, it's a God that we can really worship, isn't it? Oh, yeah. A grand God who's always been God. He wasn't a man once upon a time. And there's not... And he's not, there's not multiple gods. There's only one, yeah. Isaiah 40 through 10. Yeah, only and one And Isaiah, four, all chapter Isaiah 44. Well, Lynn, thank you so <laughs> much for sharing your story. We appreciate you watching, and we'll be back for another installment next week. Good night. Mm -hmm.